Alright, new game. Time to play this shit. Standard difficulty. Fuck that bullshit. I don't even give a fuck. Let's fucking go hard mode on this bitch. If you want to autosave, sure, fuck it. Yep. Don't give a shit. Yeah, Xcons, I'm gonna do Pokemon battles. Why does it look like it's already in 3D mode? That's weird. Yeah, the screen moves when I move it in 3D mode. So that's why it's doing that. So now, I should say something in advance about this. This demo with Bravely Default is a unique demo, as in what goes on in this demo does not happen in the full game. Like, you go to this town in the full game, and some of these events sort of happen, but the actual gameplay herein is uniquely made just for the demo. So a, lot of, so, a lot of this shit doesn't even happen, if any of it. The main purpose of this demo is for you to familiarize yourself with the battle system, a lot of the classes available in the game, and finally, the uh, villagers you get for your village carry over into the full game, so it makes it a little bit easier on you when you start, which is kind of a neat thing they can do. So, yeah. So, uh, a lot of people have been saying this demo is very hard, and I can probably agree with them. I haven't played it yet, but from what I've read, it's very hard. And that's mainly because Bravely Default is a game that you have to play almost like a tactical RPG. Like, each enemy has to be played a certain way, but from what I understand, the difficulty levels in this are exceedingly higher than they really should be. So, that said, I'm still going to play on it hard because I don't give a fuck. So. Uh, thanks for subscribing, Zipkill. Shit. So, um... Boy, this is going to be hard to play. Hmm. Um, okay, so... Da -da -da. So, you're... Usually all these lines are voiced. A lot of the lines in the game are voiced. Um, so, basically, like, storyline context here, if this were actually in the real game, this would be probably about two hours in, two or three hours in, and you're in the wind city of Anchime, and your character, Anya Zoblige, is like basically a priestess in this game. Basically like a priestess, and your job in this game is to go around and unlock the four crystals that will basically save your world and stuff like that. And so you're back in her hometown, and that's why they're saying welcome back to her city, and then Tiz is like, you know, yeah, blah, 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 the fuck out of here. And yeah, now when I do an actual playthrough of this, I'm going to do something I normally never do in my playthroughs. I'm going to just shut up during these sections and let people read them for themselves. Because this is one of the very few games I don't want to talk over the common I don't want to talk over the dialogue on. So Yeah. Just saying. This is also out of context because um Normally when you visit this area, there's a king, and like he's supposed to be there, but instead you're talking to the prime minister, which actually happens after you've been in the city for a while, not when you first get in it, so there's like a lot of things. You can also tell really strongly too, that they kind of threw this demo together, because a lot of the dialogue for a lot of the characters does not fit their actual personality. It's really just thrown together. So, yeah. I'll put this bitch on fast tech speed. There you go. Oh, this is going to be so hard to play. I didn't realize it until I actually started doing this. A lot of this, like I said, is an actual plot line that will actually fit in the game, so I don't give a shit about skipping it. Wait. Okay, I'll check that again when I do the video. I think they fucked up on something there. Um, I'm gonna be just doing mainly this. Like I said, the actual storyline doesn't really matter in this, because it's not part of the actual game, so... Yeah. Um, so, okay, so here's one of the main features of the game. 
Buh. I'm just gonna explain this to you guys. I'm gonna explain a lot better than this shit did. So here's what happens is if you press the right D-pad, you can see this little menu here to the side on the bottom right of the stream, on my bottom window. And so what this does is it takes you to Narende Village, and fuck off, I don't care. Okay, so what you do here <clears throat> is you go in here, and you see these little three areas. You have villagers in your village, which right now is only one. You only have one villager. And so what you do in the village is you set your villagers to build shit, like for example we'll do here, and you set one, and that's how long it will take them, and they will work on leveling that up. Now the thing is, is, is when you level up one of these stores, you get that item to use, you get that item that you can buy in shops later on. And doing this village stuff is some of the only, it's some of the most powerful weapons in the game are only available in uh, Narende Village. And so it starts off with just these, in the full game there's something like 20 of these little icons, and you have to like level them all up to level 11 or 10 or etc, whatever else to get some of the best shit in the game. And so a lot of this is done by putting a bunch of your villagers on here and then putting your game in sleep mode overnight and then letting them work on stuff because if you try and do stuff like this, that's going to be two hours and I think this one's probably even longer. Yeah, this one's ten hours. So, but the more villagers you get, the more the time goes down. Like if you have four villagers work on this ten hour one, it goes down to four hours. If you have, you know, eight of them work, it goes down to two hours, etc. So you really need to... Uh, Put some focus on doing this, and when you street pass somebody, you get more villagers too, which is why I've mentioned multiple times it's good to have a lot of friends that play this game. So, if it says that I'm playing SimCity on the stream, you should probably refresh because I, I updated it um, a lot. I updated it like five times and it should have worked, so I don't know what the fuck's going on. So, oh, so it's a basic gameplay tutorial. Well, okay, we already know about restoring Narende, so don't give a fuck. Alright, suck a dick. So basically they're just giving you gameplay advice here about what to do and stuff like that, but I'm going to cover all that when I actually play, etc. Um, this is a strategy RPG. The best way to describe this game is like Final Fantasy V in terms of the job system, Final Fantasy Tactics in terms of the actual strategy used in battles, and Final Fantasy maybe six or seven in terms of how dark the storyline is, but this is easily the most darkest thing that Square has ever put out. Um, so yeah, so you speak with people in blue and you get to take on quests, and in the normal game, you don't get to do any of these quests. This is again just for the demo. So depending on how much of it you complete, you actually get to have shit that's carried over to the full game. So we're gonna do that. So you get a bunch of antidotes and eye drops and all that shit which you can use to get rid of blind and so forth. So you've come at the perfect time. Will you hear me out? Sure, that's great. So you have to get beast liver and give them to them if you get it. You can get beast livers by defeating panthers. Okay, that's great. Accept that shit. That is fucking lovely. Okay, so. Um, next thing we need to do is we need to talk to this dick. Okay, I guess whatever. Um, and this is a magic shop. The way magic works in this game is when you level up a class you get the ability to learn other spells, and then once you have the money to buy that spell, then you can buy it. And then once you've bought it, anybody in your party that's leveled up to that level can use that spell. For example, if I have a white mage that has the ability to do, like, Cura, Raze, and Asuna, and I buy those scrolls, then if another character in the party eventually levels up to that white mage level, they're already going to have those spells available as soon as they get to that level. So, <coughs> so um, yeah. So, we have 500 gold, uh, I'm gonna like conserve this and just get the most whatever shit. Uh, I'm gonna get Cure, because we need that, Poison uh, to get rid of Poison, and Blind to get rid of Blind. And so I'm gonna save the rest for a Black Magic spell here later. Let's talk to him and see if there's anything here. Yes, I know you can attract more villagers using Street Pass, that is great. And then you have the Weapon Shop, which obviously is weapons, but we don't really need any of those right now, because from what I can assume, our party is probably fitted to the teeth. Okay, no, they're not. They're not even remotely fitted to the teeth. Hmm. Well, this makes things a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, what jobs do we... Oh, boy. Okay, good. So we have a lot of jobs. So you have a lot of jobs. They're all the same for each person. This is maybe only about a third of the jobs in the full game. Um, they're all level one. So, 
Yeah. Let's just go into a job. Let's, okay, you know what? Let's just do this. Um, we need a knight. Let's see. Okay, so I have examines. So that's good. So we can just do that. We have. We need a knight. Fucking knight's not really the best class, but herp or derp. Um, we need a black mage, because they're good. Um, we need a white mage. I'm doing this, like, completely wrong in terms of who I should be putting on the classes, but that's fine. No problem, you know. No problem. And we need a Valkyrie, which I guess we don't really need a knight then, but... Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. I don't care. Um, so abilities, what you can do in this game, much like Final Fantasy Tactics, is you can give yourself a primary class, and then you can give yourself a secondary ability and a secondary job. You can actually give yourself a secondary job and then support abilities. So I'm going to give myself this so I can examine people, which is basically, you know, like, scanning them for shit. Um, I'm going to give myself... <clears throat> what does this do again? Ooh. Oh, you know what? Whatever. Fuck it. Let's just, let's do it. I don't even care. That's a really derpy combination to do, but, you know, fuck the police. Um, these are all really stupid combinations, but that's fine. We're just, we're just being dumb. Um, and so then, so what you can do is you can also do support abilities, which I don't think we have any of because we're all at level 1, but basically once you level them up, you can get support abilities, which means you can have, like, the abilities of four or five different classes at once, which is pretty nice. So we're going to go back here, and um, not really much else we can do right now. Can we get any items? Not really any actual useful items. Unless, do I have enough for a phoenix down? Or how many? I don't even have a phoenix down. Wow. Wow. Okay, so I guess people weren't kidding about this game, basically telling you to fuck off. So this is the adventure, and basically what you can do with him is you can save the game, but as the game goes on and you unlock stuff in Narende, he'll have an adventure shop, which allows you to buy stuff that you can only get at his shop. And the chick there in the middle that's dancing and stuff like that is Aerie, is basically your... Fi Wait, that's saved really fast. Did that even save? Wow, that's fast. And then obviously the inn, which is the inn. And then bet your cares about your play bonuses. Sure, not right now. Suck a fat one. So um, I guess we have to do that one goal then. I guess we can't do them like all at once. I guess we have to go get beast livers. So, here's the main system of the game. We're just going to ignore this because I'm going to explain to you how the fuck to do this. Also, the actual game map is like 10 times the size, so don't take this to be literal. Can we actually go to the oasis in this? Nope. 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 Can we go in the cave? Is encounters even turned on? Oh yeah, by the way, so you can go to, um, you can go to your tactics here, your settings menu. And you can actually change the encounter rate to zero. Which means you will not encounter a single random encounter in the entire game. Now some people like to play this way for speedruns, which is actually the explicit reason they put it in. Other people like to play this way because they want to go through a very difficult section they're having trouble with and just jump straight to the boss. And even more people play this way because they just like the challenge of not being able to level up whatsoever. Additionally, you can also raise the encounter rate to plus 100%, giving you twice as many encounters if you want to grind. So that's pretty neat that you can do that. But encounter rates at fucking... Yeah, that's weird. So let's herp or derp around here. What is up with this? I'm like not getting into any battles, dude. There we go, damn. Encounter rate hella low. So, we got these two snake guys, um, so here's the way the battle system in this game works. Is, you have your obvious attack, you, you fucking attack something, I don't know how much more obvious that can be. Um, abilities is your jobs, so you know, you have like your jobs, stuff like that, you know, your abilities and your jobs. Here's the main meat of the uniqueness of the battle system in the game, it is the brave and default system. Now you'll notice here Tiz is a character I'm doing actions for, and you can see on the bottom right there it says minus one when I move it to brave. And what Brave does is it spins your BP, which is the little number there, by your characters. You start off every battle, with exceptions, you know, and stuff like that, depending on certain abilities, with zero BP. And so whenever you do an action, like for example, attack, or use an ability, you use up one BP, which puts you in the negative. 
people are able to act on a turn if they have zero BP or above. If they have negative BP, their turn is skipped and they gain one BP every turn that they don't do something. So while that may seem kind of confusing, I'll try and show you in actual action what I mean about that. The second thing is, is that the default command is basically what is your defense in this game, but when you also default, you gain one BP up to a maximum of three that you can stop. So I'm going to show you different ways here to do this. The first thing you can do is just spam the Brave, which I'm going to do here, which is going to allow me to attack four times against these guys in a row. And then with Anya's, I'm going to just do default, which immediately ends the turn for her and she gains one BP. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for Ring a Bell, and for Idea, I'm just going to jump in the air. Now you'll notice here when I do this jump, it says BP1 on it, and that's because to do that action, it takes an extra BP which means that you're going to be dropped down to negative two instead of just a negative one for that single action. So, I'm gonna jump up in the air with her and land on this motherfucker. And then once you're done with that, then you end your turn. And so these guys are gonna jump up and fucking attack, herp a derp, whatever. And so, see he attacks once, and then a second time, and then a third time, and then a fourth time. Now. Because I was able to attack four times, that means now you'll see the turn immediately goes to Anya's and Tiz can't do anything for this turn or the next three turns. So the advantage of doing Brave is that you're able to burst down an opponent if you think you can take him that fast, but the disadvantage is that you're completely defenseless for the time it takes to get back your BP. So when you are doing that, you have to make sure that you know the enemy well enough, and a lot of the enemies in this game are very strategy based. Now notice I have black magic selected, but I can't do any black magic because obviously I don't have any learned. I can, however, do a performative ability which will raise everybody in my party's before or physical attack by four turns. So I'll do that because we do have two physical attackers in this. Um, so I'm going to do white magic here and I'm going to cast on all allies to raise their life a little bit. Um, he's going to attack again. Luckily they're not doing any poison. And so she does an actual performance thing, and now all of her physical attack is up by 125%. Now, that didn't happen to Adia because she was up in the air, but you can also press the right analog stick to see all the current status buffs and debuffs you've got. So, so since she's a mage, she can't really do much, but I believe you can possibly stack this, and I'm not sure. I forget if you can stack this or not. Um, upper limit. Okay, so we can actually stack that, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to end her turn, and I'm going to uh, cast White Magic again here on my party to make sure they're fine. And I'm going to... Um, what can I do? Ironclad? Oh, fuck that shit. Okay, so I'm not going to jump because it's not really worth it, but I'm going to attack this Venomous Snake four times because uh, Valkyrie has a pretty high attack stat along with the buff that Anya's is going to give. And so the buff there is going up again, and now they're going to be able to do some significant damage. Not really that high though, because they're only level 1. So uh, I'm going to Brave here on her, and I'm going to... Uh, wait, does that use magic? Huh, I didn't know that used magic, I thought that was just a status one, alright, whatever. So I can't even use that power anymore because she's down to magic, so I'm just going to default with both of them, and so they can defend if they take any damage. Um, because we need to get Tiz back up here to do some damage. So Tiz is back up to 0 BP, which means that he can now attack again, and he can do his shit again. So, can we summon Friend in this? No. I'll tell you what Summon Friend does in a little bit, but basically, it allows you to summon one of your friend's characters and use their ability that they've selected for all of their friends to do sometimes ridiculous damage. So, uh, I'm gonna attack the snake here again. And Anya's again really doesn't have anything, so she should just default. And same for Ring of Bell, he can't really do anything. Now, one of the things I love about this game... Wow, they got fucked. One of the things I love about this game is that you can speed up the battle speed by pressing right twice on the D-pad. So, you notice how slow it's going now, right? When I'm doing the attacks? Well, compare that to this. Now also, by the way, see that I'm at 3 BP? Now I can Brave four times and only go down to negative 1 BP. So... If you default, you can do that and not really have much of a penalty. But um, let's put this up. Whoop. I fucked that up. Yeah, I'll talk about the sleep points thing here in just a second. Well, well, yeah, Putty Man, but you realize I don't, I don't have any other option. Like, I can't use... I don't have a sword to give... Or I don't have a spear to give the Valkyrie. So, yeah. 
So I'm going to attack four times here. And now watch how fast this goes when I speed it up. Really shitty damage, that's because they're a mage. So you can basically blow through battles really fucking fast doing this. You can also press um, this button, Y button, to automatically do what you just did in the last turn, which means you can pretty much just auto play through battles, which is really fucking nice for if you want to grind. So we should have went up a lot of level. We didn't even go up one level from that? Are you fucking serious? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this back down to medium because this is ridiculous. I don't want to take 80 fucking years to level up on this. This is fucking insane. <clears throat> um, Link's hat. I don't stream Fire Emblem Awakening because I don't have it. <clears throat> We're gonna walk around more here and try and get one of these uh, Pumas to attack us. There we go. Perfect. So I'm just going to auto on this. Notice the damage that he does. So we're going to take this off auto because I need Ring of Bell to heal, even though I just blew all of their fucking stacks of Brave, but that's alright. Or he just kill him either way. So now they've all leveled up, which is good. You also have your job points on the right, which again is just like Final Fantasy Tactics and Final Fantasy V and all that stuff. And they can level up. Um, so we're going to go here to Magic and heal with Ring of Bell. So now they're all healed up. They're going to Herp Derp here. We're also going to change the encounter rate to 100% because this is fucking ridiculous. They should be coming out a lot faster than this. There. We're also going to check Narende Village. So, um, so now you can see that this is available. So now these items are available. So now that I've built that item shop, I can now get that from the adventure store. So we're going to confirm this again and build this again. And we'll be able to get that done in an hour and 30 minutes to have either available.